Kuroko's Basketball, a popular shonen sports anime series, explores the concept of misdirection, a real-world method employed by contemporary magicians. Tatsuya Kuroko, the show's primary protagonist, makes this magical notion a reality by applying it to the domain of sports, notably middle and high school basketball. Let's discuss how the modern-day magician's tool has been utilized and adapted in the anime. Firstly, what is Kuroko's Basketball? Kuroko's Basketball anime series created in partnership with the original manga creator Tadatoshi Fujimaki and Project IG aired three seasons from April 2012 to June 2015 and quickly became a fan favorite among anime sports fans. It follows the main protagonist, Tetsuya Kuroko, also known as the Phantom Sixth Man, as he makes new friends and allies such as Taiga Kagami, a returnee student from America, and members of Seiren High's basketball team to compete against his old teammates, the Generation of Miracles, at the Summer Inter High and Winter Cup tournaments. Many sports series, such as Haikyuu and Diamond Noes, in their fictional universes, mirror real-life sports techniques and play styles. Nevertheless, what distinguishes Kuroko's basketball is the incorporation of a non-sports-related methodology into its basic storytelling basis. Next up, what is misdirection? Misdirection is a method widely employed by magicians to transfer a target's interest or focus to another person or object by subtle variations in sight and gestures, as stated in Season 3, Episode 13, A Day with Blue Skies. Similarly, it has been demonstrated that this approach is further magnified by Kuroko's innate lack of presence, making it more strong and more credible in a stressful context such as matches, when it's easy to lose track of other players' positions. According to Psychology Today, this is a frequent psychological phenomenon in which the brain blurs out facts that aren't necessary for daily living, such as the position of a fire extinguisher, an additional the in a phrase, or a passerby on the way to work. Another similar study was presented in the book Misdirection, Magic, Psychology, and Its Application by Gustav Kuhn, Patricia Kingori, and Cohen Peters Greetens. A set of volunteers was asked to count how many times a ball was passed throughout a basketball game in one of the studies cited in Kuhn's study. During the research, 60% of the participants failed to spot a guy dressed as a gorilla crossing the basketball court as the players were passing the ball around. The relevance of this research in terms of Kuroko's basketball is that the breadth of misdirection can be applied not just to a magician extracting a rabbit from a hat, but also to practically everything from politics to sports and espionage. Don't go anywhere, we're going to discuss how misdirection has been used in Kuroko's basketball. Moving on, how is the misdirection used in the anime? According to Gustav Kuhn and his colleagues, the four fundamental components utilized to accomplish misdirection are attention, memory, reasoning, and awareness. Kuroko employs all of these components to establish the groundwork for his basketball tactics, such as Ignite Pass Kai, Misdirection Overflow, and Vanishing Drive. Attention, especially attentional distraction, is the first of the four components. Attentional distraction is described as the capacity to shift the target's attention to another person or item. Kuroko uses his innate lack of presence and his extensive understanding of the game to give the impression of invisibility and push emphasis away from him, avoiding attention with more apparent presences such as the ball and Taiga Kagami. Memory, primarily memory manipulation, is the second of the four components. The capability to make it challenging for the audience to understand how a trick is achieved is characterized as memory manipulation. To achieve this effect, Kuroko keeps his touch with the ball to a minimum and avoids dramatic movements or facial expressions while doing them, which confuses the target of his technique, in this case, the other side. Reasoning, especially the idea of erroneous solutions, is the third of the four components. The capacity to employ pre-existing assumptions to deceive the target into reaching the wrong response is characterized by the theory of misleading solutions. Kuroko does not generally explain his tactics to achieve this impact, leaving his opponents to assume what's going on. For example, in an episode in which Kuroko employs his unique shooting form, Phantom Shot, the opposing team mistakenly assumes that the ball is being shot from a lower angle than it is. Because the other side was locked in their incorrect solutions, they were unable to discover that he was launching the ball at a greater trajectory. The fourth and last component is awareness, especially knowledge of flawed perceptions. This idea is defined as the precise instant when the target recognizes he has been duped and is no longer subject to magical influence. To prevent this 
from happening, Kuroko is changed out multiple times throughout a game so that the other team does not grow accustomed to the misdirection methods and loses its efficacy. So, is misdirection realistic? The research required to achieve authenticity in any anime is extensive, and its application in sports anime is much more difficult, as the artists must adhere to the laws of the sport which make it credible. Kuroko's Basketball introduced a complex collection of magical and psychological theories and tactics into the field of sports anime. Overall, it implemented these deception methods very convincingly, despite the inclusion of superhuman abilities like Sejiro Akashi's Emperor Ai and Ryota Kize's Perfect Copy. Finally, Almost Magic, Emperor Ai, and the Perfect Copy. The Emperor Ai allows the user to see extraordinary detail in another person's body, such as breathing, muscle movements, or contractions, body tension, rhythm, perspiration, and so on, allowing the user to foresee future moves. It can be activated by watching individuals and their muscle motions, which is how Kuroko obtained his quasi-emperor eye. So far, the four known users have all demonstrated excellent observing abilities and court awareness. Akashi's ability to perceive other players' potentials, in addition to their strengths and flaws, Kuroko's ability to detect other people's routines and patterns of behavior, and finally, Kise, who must study others to exactly replicate their motions. Even though we haven't seen much, Gold was able to determine Murasaki Bara's defensive range and Akashi's Emperor Eye. The Emperor Eye is one of the most potent skills, since it can drastically affect the outcome of a match. It is also claimed that the Emperor Eye is only as powerful as its user, as Akashi is strong not because he possesses the Emperor Eye, but because he understands how to wield it. Every user has uniquely built up their Emperor Eyes. Akashi obtained his via long-term mentoring of the Teak team as vice captain and subsequently captain. His eyelids were forced open as his second identity appeared during his one-on-one -on -one combat with Murasaki Bara. Kuroko, unlike Akashi, has gained his eye ability via long-term observation at a slower speed. However, his eyes did not begin to acquire observation abilities until he began to develop his misdirection. Kuroko needed to study others to employ misdirection, which led to the growth of his eyes. Kisei's capacity to copy and perfect copy has also contributed to the development of his eyes. Kise must study and analyze the movements of others around him to use his perfect copy. Finally, it's unknown how Gold gained his eyes precisely, although it may be presumed that he acquired them from the tough training he went through when learning his other skills. Talking of Kisei's perfect copy, let's explore that more. Kisei can replicate every single move he has ever seen as an extension of his copying ability, erasing the constraints of his original. The distinction between his physical talents and those of the original user of the skill is erased, and Kisei is capable of imitating anybody, including the generation of miracles. To utilize this, he must replace the missing piece from the original user with his own, holding more force to mimic Midorima's full court shot and leaping higher to mimic Murasaki Bara's invincible defense or Thor's hammer are two examples. He initially utilized it against Aomine, whom he idolized, and overcame the barrier by desiring to exceed him, activating it for the very first time. He employed it again, this time against Haizaki, beginning with Midorima's full court shot by spending more time than normal to make the shot, much like Midorima does. He may imitate Ayomine's agility by slowing down at first. Kisei can imitate Murasaki Bara's impregnable defense by using his leaping ability and planning. He can even duplicate Akashi's Emperor Eye. Kisei may also combine duplicated techniques, such as stopping Kuroko's phantom shot with Akashi's Emperor Eye and Murasaki Bara's blocking. He also cleverly combines Akashi's Emperor Eye with Ayomine's quickness for the perfect ankle breaker. Kisei has also imitated Kuroko's Ignite Pass Kai in Phantom Shot, as well as the Arc of Midorima's Shot. Because this naturally imposes significant stress on the body, Kisei can only keep his perfect copy for five minutes. Nevertheless, during the Seirin vs. Kaiji round, Kisei forcibly prolonged the time restriction by an extra two minutes, despite his damaged ankle from his previous fight with Haizaki. This is also one of the reasons he can fill all five roles for Team Vorpal Swords. In the duel against the Jabberwock, Kisei is also able to perfectly mimic Ayomine's level of play while in the zone. That's a wrap for this video. Do let us know if you think Kuroko no Basket incorporates misdirection convincingly. Don't forget to hit a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Bye!